What's up everybody? Today I want to talk about a specific technique that we can use to work toward our goal. We're going to talk about mental movies. That's right. It's manifesting. Let's get into it. So it is true that I do hate the word manifesting because it's just overused, I think, and you know, it's kind of like listening to uh, Hotel California by the Eagles, right? I mean, I think we can come up with better vernacular for this type of thing, and many other people have. It's basically really about visualizing what it is the thing that, that we ultimately want in the other side of reality and figuring out how we're going to bring that into this reality, right? Like that's what manifesting is. It means you want something and then you bring it into reality. So there's two parts to that piece. You know, people talk a lot about visualization and vision boards. These things are really good and they're very helpful, but there are a couple of things that are huge stumbling blocks when you are implementing this process. If you watch a movie like The Secret, it's going to tell you to just lay on your couch, visualize the thing, and then voila, checks in the mail, checks in the mail. Yeah, we've heard that one before. Basically, what we want to understand is that's really only a part of the process. And the true value of mental movies is really emotional. Because as we learned a couple of videos ago, right, emotions are the language of the universe. So how, it, how is it that we can bring this thing into the world that we want? First and foremost, we want to take action, okay? We definitely want to take action. There's no substitute for experience. There's no substitute for action. Really, even if you visualize, 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 I don't think that is really the same as taking action. It may emotionally be, and it may help you tremendously, but it's not the same. It's just not. I visualize myself a bunch of times in a bunch of different scenarios, and while when you do those visualizations, those emotions do come up in you, and you get to experience those, well, let's just say it's not quite the same as actually doing it, okay? Is it helpful? Absolutely. Does it create emotions? Absolutely. And so one of the things that we can do is mental movies, right? Also known as visualization or slides or what have you. It's basically laying and visualizing something and trying to experience it and make it as real as you possibly can. Maxwell Maltz was brilliant, and right now, I recommend, if you can, go over to my Patreon. I have a, a podcast up now that's open for everybody to listen to, and it has a clip of Maxwell Maltz in it, about, mm, I'd say about like 35 minutes of Maxwell Maltz, and he is wonderful. He's just the sweetest man, uh, and he was a surgeon, and what he realized was that even when he fixed people's blemishes physically, it didn't change the way that they viewed themselves. So he and Salvador Dali were friends, and he helped Salvador Dali out. He even talks about it in the, in the recording uh, about a, a painting that Salvador Dali actually sent to him. So really, what Maxwell Maltz is getting at is what we want to use mental movies for mostly is self-worth. Because it's not really even about the thing that it is that you want. What's really fighting you is not even your is not necessarily the wantingness even that you want it. It's the fact that you think for some reason you don't deserve it. So what really we need to combat is self-worth. Self-worth. What is the value of yourself to you? It's a good, good thing to do to visualize yourself in situations that you might not be super comfortable in because that's going to help you to expand that comfort zone. One of the things that Maxwell Monk talks about is he says that you can't do anything at all if you don't relax. If you can't relax, you can't do anything. It's just not going to go well. And we know this because if we've ever been ah, freaking out, then we know that we've put a lot of stuff in our own way, and now we're not going to be able to perform at our best because we're not at ease, right? We talked about being at ease before. Okay? But this is really a... Uh, a, th a three-step process, okay? We want to take action and lots and lots of it. That's why I put it first, okay? And so Maxwell Maltz was like big into sports psychology and I was a big Braves fan in the 90s. We had John Smoltz and Tom Glavin and they had the best sports psychologists and they would use visualization as a tool to put them in these situations, right? And their emotions would reflect it and they'd be at the bottom of the night and they'd be firing curves or what have you. So it definitely helped them. 
But guess what else they were doing? They were throwing pitches. They were actively playing games. They were getting used to these emotions in their body. They were actually feeling these emotions. So, obviously, we want to visualize. Maxwell Maltz says that we have a self-servo mechanism, which is a mechanism in our brain that makes us see the next thing that we need for our success. It's kind of like a particular activation system or something like that, if you've ever heard of such a thing. Basically, it helps us to identify opportunity and lights that up in our brain and makes us be like, recognize. Oh, you know what? That, that's something I need to do. It's a way for your intuition to sort of recognize what your next step may be. So be on the lookout for that. Some people call that signs, right? Well, the third and most critical thing is to let go. And boy, oh boy, is that the hardest thing. We talked about this in the last video. How many times have I wanted something so bad and then finally got to the point where I had exhausted myself of wanting it and then it came. You know, it's like once you let go of that thing, it shows right up in spades. And it's kind of funny and kind of ironic. Uh, <laughs> But there are some techniques that you can do to kind of let go of that, um, that compulsion as well, okay? And there's some other things that we can, we can do also to combat that based on our personality type assessments and things like that because each one of us kind of grabs onto things in a different way, right? Like the way I do it is not necessarily the same way that you do it. So take the action, lots and lots of action. Visualize, visualize, visualize. Ultimately, it's your self-worth or the value that you think that's really ultimately in your way between yourself and your goal more often than not. And it's not necessarily the desire itself. It's that you don't think you deserve it. It's this feeling of undeserving. So there's a lot of ways to do that. Obviously visualize yourself in situations that are out of your comfort zone. Go and do things that are out of your comfort zone. Fail, 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 fail a lot. That will help. And Learn to be at ease. Like, take your time to relax in those situations. Once you get comfortable in those positions, then ultimately it will be natural and it'll be really easy to be at that place, at that fancy dinner that you visualize or whatever. And a big part of the letting go process that I'll, that I'll also add is that letting go Really what that means is like the, the emotion's good, especially if you can relax it. But one thing that's really stum a stumbling block for a lot of people, myself included, is that when you let go of something, remember that it's never going to look exactly how you visualized it, okay? You're going to visualize a thing, you're going to take a lot of action, and then when it comes into your life, if you're not careful, you may not recognize it because you have been so specific. That's not a bad thing to be specific, but remember, the reason why we visualize is to create emotion and mental movies. So that's why. Go check out my Patreon. There is an awesome chat with Dr. Maxwell Maltz on there. Look up his stuff. He's fantastic. He is just the sweetest man. Uh, his interviews are great, and I really, really enjoy all of his work on mental movies. He talks about first-person mental movies as well as third-person mental movies. Both can be effective. Many people say that the first person are more effective. I have no argument there. That's probably true. However, I don't think it hurts to put yourself out of your body as well and be an observer. I think they're both valuable. I don't see any reason why not to do both. So anyway, I hope that helps some and I hope you guys are doing well. Check out that Patreon episode. Like I said, it's available to everyone, the whole public. I'm doing weeklies over there on Patreon. I got a coaching program coming out launching at the beginning of the year. I hope each and every one of y'all are doing well. Go check out my new ebook and audiobook at bootsygreenwood.com. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Have a great one.